All right, you guys ready for your first oil change in a 2025 or newer Cummins? I'm going to give you the cliff notes right here. So the things you're going to need. Three gallons of 10W30 synthetic oil. It's very simple. You just pour all three gallons in there. Don't, uh, don't worry. 11 quarts will look full at first, but once you run the engine and drive it and park it and then measure it, it's going to need all three gallons. So they've made that super simple for us. If you drive it only in the winter when it's really cold, then you can change to 540. 10W30 is going to work the rest of the year, though. Filter, you're going to want to get that from Geno's. It's a fleet guard. I'll go into more detail on that later in the video, but that's what you're going to want there. I'll put a link in the description. For this guy, this is a 6.28 millimeter socket, which is a, a very specific socket they specify for the filter canister lid. And that's also going to work for the two fuel filters that are back here now. So I get two of these. So I have one in the fuel, one in the toolbox, and one in my glove box. And that way, if I ever gel up on the highway, I've got this guy ready to go, so I can change my gelled up fuel filters out. You're also going to need a 3 8 drive. So the drain plug is just a square 3 8 hole. You can throw that in there. Then you'll need your torque wrench. And lastly, you'll need a three gallon bucket. So I get these at Menards. It's a three gallon bucket. You get a lid for it. That slides under the oil pan and gives you enough room to get your hand in there to get the drain plug in and out. So it's perfect. Catches all the oil. So you have it all in one place and put a lid on it and you can take it in and get rid of it. So very simple process to drain the oil. First thing we're going to do, we're going to remove this lid. Don't worry about that little Allen plug. Just put your 28 millimeter socket on here. Take this guy off and set it aside. You're going to take your filter and you're going to pull it up. And that releases the drain so the remaining oil in this canister can go down into the pan. Let that sit for at least three minutes because that oil takes a good while to actually reach the uh, drain plug. Then is basically as soon as you do that, you can throw your bucket under your oil pan, take your 3 8 drain plug out, and then we can start replacing our O-ring. So you're going to have an O-ring on the cap. You're going to have some O-rings on your filter. And don't put your new filter in until the canister housing is all empty. But once that's empty, we can go ahead, we'll lube up all three O-rings, and we'll insert that new canister filter all the way down until it's seated. And basically, that's going to seal this canister off. So that's going to allow us to pour some oil into the canister housing to prevent a dry start. It's going to help pre-lube that filter and get engine oil to our engine sooner than if we just leave that dry. But before we do that, we're going to go back underneath here. We're going to reinstall our drain plug. We're going to torque that to 35 foot-pounds. Once that's back in and torqued, you can come up here and you can pour a couple quarts of oil in here until you're happy with that. Then we're going to put this lid back on and they made it super simple. 25 newton meters or 18 and a half foot-pounds of torque on this guy. Pop your cap off, pour the rest of your three gallons of oil in there. And guess what? Bob is my uncle. If you want to hang out and watch the rest of the video, I'm just going to share my experience of my actual first oil change, and we'll see you guys in a future video. Thanks, guys. All right, so we got back from the dealer. It's about a 1,500-mile drive, and at the 500-mile mark, I was going to change the oil. Crawled underneath to figure out what socket we needed for the drain plug on the engine, and saw some oil on the floor under the truck. Looked up and there's oil coming out of the bell housing between the engine and the bell housing. So I'm thinking, okay, we could have maybe some assembly lube. That'd have to be a pretty healthy amount of extra assembly lube. And then rear main seal or oil pan. Turns out my neighbor had an oil pan leak in the exact same spot when he got his new truck. It was like a three day repair and uh, he lost his truck for a week. So that kind of had me worried. Contacted the dealer. They said they use rust preventative on the 
back end of the engine. So when these sit on the lot for a year, they don't sit there and rust since that's all bare metal inside there. So when they get hot, when you're driving it, that rust preventative, it's kind of waxy and it liquefies when it gets hot and then it drips down. Usually within 3000 miles, um, it all melts and comes off. And so I actually have some of that. I use it on my own parts. It's called rust slick. And it's, yeah, it's kind of waxy. And when you get a part warm, it gets a lot more fluid. And when it gets cold, it's more solid. So ran it the 1500 miles till I got home, wiped it off a few more times and drove the truck a few more times. And it's done dripping. Then someone mentioned to me, you can take a black light and shine it on the bell housing drips. And if they glow, that's the rust preventative. If it's engine oil, it won't glow with the black light. And sure enough, I'll put some pictures up here. That's the easy tell is it, it glows bright white with the black light. So I'm confident now it's not an engine leak. So I wish now in hindsight, I would have done the 500 mile oil change for the break-in. But here we are 1500 miles I'm draining it right now as I'm filming this. So Fleet Guard makes the filters. They make them for Cummins, they make them for Mopar. It's the same thing. It's just, they brand them different part numbers, different box, same part though, same physical part. So this guy's gonna be your cheapest bet straight from Fleet Guard through Gino's Garage, about 21 bucks. If you go with the Mopar version through the dealer, it's over $50, you might pay $60 for it. And I don't believe since this engine right now is basically just in this truck. I don't think Cummins is selling it right now. You know, if you went to like a Kenworth or a Freightliner dealership, sometimes you'd be able to get filters there as well. So here's the Mopar version. And apparently the reason these were on back order for two months after the trucks had already been released was packaging. Well, there's not really much packaging to that. And then over here, you can see we get some visual instructions on there. For oil, I'm going with Amsoil 10W30. They're 100% synthetic. This stuff, if you get in on their deals, it's about $27 a gallon, and this engine's gonna take three gallons. And just so you can see what I'm talking about, you can see down there, they do sell a Cummins branded Fleet Guard filter when you get it from the Cummins dealership, and that's basically what comes on the engine, when you have a spin-on filter, you'll see that Cummins brand next to the Fleet Guard. So it's the same physical part, just different branding and marketing and final sale price. So do yourself a favor and just get direct from Fleet Guard, save all that unnecessary cost. So actually the Mopar filter comes with these very, very, very detailed instructions. It even tells you, get a 6.28 millimeter socket, a uh, lot more thorough, two-sided even. So you take the canister lid off. This is what that looks like. And your new filter does come with a new lid O-ring, which is nice. It does not come with, however, a new O-ring for our drain plug, which is kind of a bummer because those can kind of be a pain to find. Usually it's a special order, that kind of stuff. And you can see I got my three gallon bucket under the truck and it fits perfectly you can fit your your wrench up in there to get the drain plug out get your hand in there and you can see our oil level down there in the bucket it's perfect capacity bucket for doing an oil change on one of these so really all in all it's a pretty painless oil change compared to all the previous years and of course they couldn't update this front wheel liner you know they got this useless cutout that's just going to let mud go onto your turbo and engine now but you used to have your oil filter here and to take it out there it sucked um it's hot now you don't have to put your hands on a hot filter which is nice so i'm, I'm really digging this